Hey y'all, my name is Adina Barnett Miller, but I'm known to my students as Mrs. B. I've been passionate about West Virginia history for as long as I can remember, but my mom would tell you it all started when I was three years old and she bought me a West Virginia County's puzzle at Geno's Pizza. I've taught history in Ripley, West Virginia for over 20 years now, and I'm an adjunct professor who teaches college West Virginia history to high school students. Please join me for West Virginia History with Mrs. B, a field trip across the mountain state to walk in the footsteps of those who came before us. Hey y'all, it's West Virginia History with Mrs. B, and we are coming to you today from the Greenbrier Resort, America's Resort in White Sopper Springs, which is in Greenbrier County. And we are so excited to be here. We're guests, so we're dressed up today instead of in the traditional sweatshirt. But we want to tell you a little bit of the history of the Greenbrier, because this is an amazing place to visit, amazing place to stay, an amazing place to have fantastic meals and so the Greenbrier dates its original inception back to 1778 and that is the first time someone of European descent came here to the springs um, to use the waters for medicinal purposes. There was a local woman who had a really bad case of rheumatoid arthritis. She came here and she bathed in the springs three times a day and within 10 days she was able to get up and walk like she was just perfectly healthy and so people heard about this and so they continued to come to the springs but even before her um, indigenous people had used the springs particularly the shawnee of this region had used the springs for medicinal purposes um, for you know millennia and so we are at the iconic spring house here at the Greenbrier and so this building is one of the oldest buildings in all of the resort property and if you look there in the middle that's actually where the springs is um, it is sulfur water which doesn't smell the greatest um, but it is at a constant 63 degrees um, at all times of the year and so when people first came here not only did they bathe in the springs, um, but they were recommended to drink the water three times a day. So every morning, people would line up here in the morning um, to get their water before breakfast. Then they'd take their water again before lunch, and then they'd have another one before the evening dinner. Um, the first building to be built here after the spring house is going to be a tavern. And if you look right up there where the croquet course is, and there's Christmas lights, you can see it. That is where the original tavern once stood. So people started coming here in the 1800s, um, but this place became world renowned in the 1820s and 30s, particularly in that 1834, 35 time period, especially in 1838, um, when the sitting president of the United States, Martin Van Buren, came here and had a month long holiday. And so um, people came from all over the South um, to take in the waters in the summertime. And it's amazing to think about, <coughs> there were two ways to get here. You could come up through the South on a stagecoach, or if you were from the deep South, places like Louisiana, um, Alabama, Mississippi, those folks would load onto a boat, go up the Mississippi River, go up the Ohio River all the way to Gyandot, what is now Huntington, West Virginia, and then they would take a three to four day journey over what we now call um, Route 60 Midland Trail, but at that time it was the James and Connaught Turnpike, and so they would take a st stagecoach from the Ohio River here. Um, this place grows again after the Civil War, um, like the early 1900s, um, when the Chesapeake and Ohio River, uh, Railroad, which came through from Covington White to White Sulphur, all the way to Huntington, paralleling um, what was the James and Canal Turnpike, the railroad, the station's just right across the street. And so then you could take the train and come here and to take in the waters. And so people took in the waters for medicinal purposes, not only here, but later on, they're gonna pump it into, um, the hotel and so you would go and you would drink your water three times a day uh, for health purposes. They said it helped your internal organs. So um, this place has always been 
I would say the place of the elites, the wealthiest planters pre-Civil War came here. Um, but you know, when you look at it in the 20th century, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor came here, um, Princess Grace Kelly of Monaco, um, she and her husband came here, um, President Eisenhower is here. Uh, so this place has always been well used, well loved, um, and has been the playground of the elite. I said earlier the Greenbrier has always been a place for the elites. Behind me, right up on the hill behind me, um, these are cottages that were built in the 1830s. They're all called the Alabama Row and so people actually paid for and built their cottages or they would rent them in the summertime and in particular these were put up and set aside for uh, rich Alabama planters who would, like I said, come up the Mississippi River up the Ohio to come here. And so these cabins are, or cottages, excuse me, are almost 200 years old. And so they, you know, it takes a lot of time, energy, effort, and money to preserve these pieces of history. Um, but the Greenbrier is putting the work into preserving these pieces. And so you can rent and stay in a lot of the cottages here. These cottages, which are the Alabama, Alabama Row, um, they're part of what's called the artist colony. And so there are local artisans who have their shops within these cottages behind me. Hey y'all, we are now standing at Louisiana Row. Again, these were cabins that were occupied by the elite Louisiana pl uh, planter class. Uh, we're getting ready to go inside this building right here, which was originally known as the Henderson House. Um, it was built in 1834 for the Henderson family. Um, it's the largest pre-Civil War cottage here at the Greenbrier. Um, but today it's known as the President's Cottage because before the Civil War there will be five different U.S. presidents who will stay in the president's cottage. So we wanted to show you it on the outside before we go in. And as you can see, it has that gorgeous American flag waving. And this is a museum that is set up to tell the story of the Greenbrier. So we're gonna go inside and show you more. Hey y'all, we are now in the President's, President's Cottage Museum and I am joined by a new friend. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. How's it going? My name's Caden. Uh, I guess you could say the curator here at the museum for the moment or take care, whatever you want to call it. Hey, so. he's a local Greenbrier County boy, graduated from high school a year early, is really into history and so we got to meet this morning on a building tour up in the main hotel and so where what room are we in uh, i like to call this a white sulfur room i guess really there's not necessarily a name for this one um the main part of this room is the walls yeah. so if you follow it around i like to say if you were down in the kind of courtyard yeah stood in the middle of it and made a full turn this is what you would have seen in the mid 1800s so this is pre-Civil War, what it would have been like in the summertime. Well, this has got to be 1858 or later. Okay, because we this, know the old whites yep, there. Due to the old white hotel. That was about 1858. So that so, was here about three years before the Civil War. So it could have been within that three years or after the Civil War. All right, let's take a guess. So that's not the current statue. No, that would have been Hygieia, the goddess of health. So, so we knew it's between 1858 and 1861 before the Civil War because we've got the old white here, which was built in 1858, and we've got the original statue on the spring house, which disappeared during the Civil War times, which yes. you taught me this morning. So, now we find Hebe's down there, it's the goddess of youth. Yes. So this gives us a good idea. People would come with their whole families to stay at the Greenbrier um, during the summer. And they said this is like a great place to go come and find a spouse, right? Yes. So that was a big thing. They had dances every night. People would have their big meal at lunch, and then they'd rest the afternoon, and then they had big dances every evening. And so this is where a lot of people um, met their future spouses. Can I chime yeah, in for a second? Of course, chime in. So in the old white hotel, there was we had the largest bar room in the east. 
With that ballroom, we were able to do four balls a day, actually. We did one in the morning, one afternoon, one evening, and one night. So you were sure to find a spouse if you really wanted to find one. Yes. Very cool. And then you could bring that spouse back. A lot of people did their honeymoon trips here, too, yes. correct? That was very popular. Even presidents. Yes. Even presidents of the United States came here for their honeymoons. So this is a great mural to see to tell a little bit of the history of this storied property. Yeah, so that's why the cottages are named certain rows. Right. Yeah, you know, Alabama row. Everybody right. there came from Alabama. Right. The big thing was you found a spouse that's from, from, Alabama. A, Alabama. from the same place. Easiest right. way to do it. So you don't have to um, move too far away from your parents. Exactly. Very cool. Well, we're going to move on, but we wanted to share this room with y'all. All right, so a lot of people, like outsiders, know about the Greenbrier because of the bunker. This is the West Virginia wing, which was built, and the bunker is underneath it. But there is a wing that was built in the 70s, correct? The Eisenhower? Yes. And it, it connected the two buildings. So it's not there. So we know this is 1963. And so here's the train depot. It says, note the train station in the foreground. Of course, um, before the 1960s, this was the main way to get here. And of course, they don't even finish the I-64 until I think like that 1980s. So if you were coming before then, um, you would have to come down um, Route 60, which is Midland Trail, um, to get to the Greenbrier from the northern parts of the state. And so here's some other pictures. You can see this is during uh, the Great Depression. Here's another one. It's 1913. This is just after the big hotel was built here at the green bar and then this this is supposed to be the old white but you don't think this one's very accurate there's some people say that this is another hotel maybe at the seat down here um prior has you a hotel in four point comfort yeah Virginia. yeah um and it looks it doesn't necessarily look exactly like the old white so it may be but also the spring house is in the foreground so i don't necessarily really know yeah, it's really interesting. And these are what they call like bird's eye views before they had, of course, they had planes to do aerial photography. But that's really cool. So are these all our presidents who have stayed here? So these are just, you know, five presidents who have the Great Briar. These are the five who have stayed in this cottage. So Van Buren, Tyler, Fillmore, Pearson Buchanan stayed in this cottage. And then this is a list of the 27 presidents who have been to the Green Briar. Oh my gosh. So starting with James Monroe, 1850, Andrew Jack, 15, excuse yes. me, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, John Tyler, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Ulysses S. Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, Chester Arthur, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, William Howard Tapp. And McKinley would make sense because he was, um, and I think Garfield too, they were on Route 60 during the Civil War. And then we've got um, Woodrow Wilson, Dwight Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower was here. We learned when he was sick with pneumonia and just fell in love with the Greenbrier. Then John F. Kennedy, LBJ, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Donald Trump. So 27 of the 46 presidents have been to the Greenbrier. That's pretty awesome to think about. So here you have the images of the presidents who have stayed in this cottage. So it says Van Buren came in 1838. And he was here for, I think, a whole month. John Tyler came more often than any other president. He vacationed here while he was go while governor of Virginia um, during his term in office as president and frequently afterwards. He even spent his honeymoon with second wife uh, Julia Gardner here in, in this building in 1844. Miller Fillmore spent a week here in 1852. Um, his attorney general, it says the Secretary of the Interior was an attorney for the White Sulphur Springs Company, which owned the Green Briar. Then you've got Franklin Pierce. He was here for a six week stay. And he was even greeted by a former president, John Tyler. And then of course, James Buchanan, the 15th president, came here. It says he was a frequent guest um, his, sorry, his Secretary of the Interior was a frequent guest and he brought the president here in the 1850s before the Civil War as well. All right, and then we've got other guys over here too. All right, let's keep on going. Huh? 
the leave room. Oh, so, wow. So this is called the leave room. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at the history on this wall. Wow. So right here's where we leave. Yep. There he so is. that is his Baltimore Road cottage. Oh. He used to own a cottage on Baltimore Road. Okay. And so that was the one that he came and stayed at every time he was here. Wow, that is fantastic. Since he's on the porch with members of his family, he stayed here in 1867, 1868, 1869. <coughs> that is phenomenal. And so here is. Um, the current owner of the Greenbrier, Jim Justice, and his wife, Kathy, um, with, this, this is uh, Dr. Conte, correct? It is Dr. Bob Conte. Yes, this, he was the historian of the Greenbrier, and so here is Robert E. Lee, this is the image they're holding, and then this is a letter. So one of those is from Mary Custis Lee, his daughter. Okay. The other one from a... I believe it is from a general who watched Eisen, or sorry, Lee sign the photo in the middle. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So to get the provenance of the letter. Yes. Oh my gosh. So I have to tell you, this summer I get to have a private tour of Blair House in Washington, D.C. And I actually got to like touch the letter that Lee wrote to President Lincoln when he resigned his commission mm -hmm. in the U.S. Army in 1861. It was pretty phenomenal. Lee's farewell order over here. Look, look at this. So much history. Here's his farewell order, April 10th. Here it is. Wow. That is so interesting. So this is him when he became president of Washington College, which eventually will become Washington and Lee College uh, in Washington Lee University down in Lexington. And then here he is with Stonewall Jackson during the Civil War at the Battle of McDowell, which is just, I think, two counties over Allegheny County. It wouldn't be Allegheny County, it'd be, um, is it Bath? Might be Bath, Bath County. But that's not too far from where we are right now here in Southern uh, West Virginia. Here's Jeb Stewart at the Battle of Brandy Station. The artist is phenomenal. And then, here we go. This is the Army of Northern Virginia and some of the actions taken in Virginia. See, you can see Battle McDowell. It's right up there in that crook right near well, West Virginia. County. Yeah, that's... Um, Bath or Highland, I can't remember. Oh, it's Highland. It's in Highland, not Bath. You're right. I couldn't remember Highlands. That's what I was trying to remember. Because it's right there near Monterey. Um, as you cross from like Pocahontas Pendleton into um, what is now Virgin what is Virginia and West Virginia. So very cool room. So can I tell you one more thing? Oh yeah, tell us <clears throat> lots more stuff. So that's what this is saying right here. This is a picture of them putting these murals back up. Uh, so during the war, whenever we had sold to the government. Oh, during World War II? Yes, during okay. World War II. These murals were taken down off the walls. This was used as a Red Cross building. Oh. These murals were taken down off the walls. They were cut into panels and preserved. Stored. Out of both rooms. Okay. So the ones in the other room were put back up in 1958. Okay. These ones, we couldn't find them. There seems there was, to be a problem with that Yes. Here. Yeah, so there was a black and white version of a wallpaper of these murals put up uh -huh. for 50 years. We couldn't find these murals. Where did they find them? 1992, we were doing renovations in our engineering building, broke through a wall, and found them perfectly restored. Um, spent about a week retouching them and put them back up. That is phenomenal. Also, here in the middle of the room, we forgot to talk about the thousand pound elephant in the middle of the room. This is a stagecoach model um, to give you an example of what um, people would have ridden on pre Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. So this is a model replica. It, this was used to transport people from the train station, which is across the road, to the main entrance. But people brought, took the stagecoach here um, before they finished the uh, 
Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, which was officially finished in January of 1873 from um, Covington to Huntington. All right, so we're in another room. We just moved upstairs. This is a full model of what the Green Bar looked like in 1859. So pre-Civil War, 1859. So you can see here the different rows of cottages. So there's Florida Row, Georgia Row, Spring Row, Wolf Row, which is where the bachelor men lived. They said Wolf Row was a pretty wild place. Yeah, Wolf Row is no longer here. And then here's Alabama Row, which we showed you. And then that's where we are in the President's Cottage up the hill. And then if you go past that, Paradise Row and Baltimore Row. Yes. Which Baltimore Row is where you said Bur uh, Lee had his cottage. Yes. And, and South Carolina too. Yeah. So Robert Lee's cottage is still here. It is probably over the hill. Oh, that's interesting. So you're not going to be able to go to it or in it, but it is still here. No. The Greenbrier owns some, some are privately owned, correct? They've sold some. Yes, that is Spring Row. Spring Row they've sold. Yeah, Spring Row are the ones that they're selling. They're selling them right now. Now, Tansas Row is marked here. Tansas was a district in Louisiana, correct? Yes. And so all those people came from that part of Louisiana um, for the summer. Yes. So then we also have Louisiana Row up here. Right. Which is where the President's Cottage is. Right. This is Louisiana Row up here. We showed you the out that outside earlier. Um, so you can see where we are on the hill and where the spring house is. So. And then we also showed you that here, what was the croquet court? That was the old tavern, correct? Yes, it's the tavern. Yeah. So most of the southern states are represented here with cottages and rows. So, but there's just so much history on the walls. In World War II, um, the military owned the uh, Greenbrier, and so they're going to use it originally um, as an internment camp for um, Japanese, Italian, and German diplomats and their families, and then they're going to turn it into a military hospital. You said, what, $3.3 million is what yes. the government paid? And, and here, so, here's images. Okay. This is all the 400 Japanese diplomats on the north entrance. So they were all held here. Probably a pretty nice place to be, yeah. you know, kept. Um, they were here until basically um, the United States um, was able to negotiate them being able to go home. So there's a, a book that's a few years old, I think, on this topic, correct? I can't remember the um, name of it. I believe it's um, Shangri La for Wounded Soldiers. Is that the one you're thinking about? No, I'm thinking of another one. There's one that's just about this part of the history, and I can't remember the name of it. So, and then here's when it was Ashford Hospital. Um, and so it's going to be a hospital until 1946, correct? Yes. Till the end of the war. Yeah, till the end of the war. Right here you can see this is marked Ashford General Hospital. And then the government sells it back to um, the railroad in 1946. So it's just such interesting history to uh, think about. So here's what it looked like before the, the before it was draperized. <laughs> After the World War II. So, and then here's some images from the 1930s. Of course, we're going through the Great Depression in the 1930s. So, it's kind of a miracle that the Greenbrier survived. So many of these um, resorts like this did not survive after, after the Great Depression and even earlier. Here's Eleanor Roosevelt. Even during the Depression, we had so many people come here that we were able to add two brand new wings to the hotel. That's so crazy to think about. We added 350 more guest rooms going to the hotel even during the Depression. That's wild. I mean, you know, because so many places didn't survive. Well, and, and a big part of, like, um, with what was going on in Europe, people didn't feel safe going to Europe. So those that still had money and would have vacationed in Europe, a lot of them came and stayed um, here. In, here instead. We actually had a... 
advertisement. I don't know if it's in here or not, but it, the advertisement showed the green briar, and it said, better than Europe, take the cure of white sulfur. Yeah, yeah, because it was a lot safer. You knew you were going to um, not get mixed up in all the craziness happening in um, Europe at the time. Okay, so we're going to show you some more history. So the railroad owns the Greenberg Resort for a long time until um, basically, what, 2009, 2010, right? 2009. Yeah, so here you've got the image of the of the old Chesapeake and Ohio uh, locomotive and then this newer electric one coming in 1951 to the Greenbrier and then I love this image it has the Chessie cat and then you've got the Greenbrier out the window and then here's the Chessie cat with the Greenbrier out the window as well I mean they were very proud as the um, railroad to own this um, but unfortunately the Greenbrier was operating in the red and so that's why they sold it also important to note U.S. Route 60, when they, when it went from being, you know, like mud, uh, and they paved it, it was the first paved east-west route from the east coast to the west coast across the United States. So they finished it pretty early, so that helped the Green Road too, because yes. not only can you get here by railroad, now you can just drive yourself here instead. And that opened us, us a lot more. So whenever it was before the railroad was even here, we could only have the elite class, you know. Right. The only people who could actually afford it. Right. Once we got that, we were able to have middle class here as well. Exactly. Exactly. It opens it up to so many more people because you don't have to hop on a train. So here they are building the hotel in 1913. So the main hotel where we're staying is over 100 years old. So they originally built the bath house portion first, right? Yes, that was built in 1912. Yeah. And the pool is still the same swimming pool, correct? Yes. It's indoor. There's one. been changes to it, but the tiles have never changed. The tiles are Over have stayed the same old. since 1912. So 110, 112 years. Yep. And then you can see some of these historic postcards um, from the inside. And here we go. The rendezvous of the social elect, the Greenbrier, set among the heaven kissing hills of the Alleghenies. If you look at the bottom right hand side of that um, one you just read, uh -huh. that's beautiful addition of rooms, 300, or beautiful addition of 350 rooms will be ready by spring 1931. Wow. That's, that's what I was talking about. In there. the Depression. During the Depression, we're even adding one, have people coming here. That's wild. Well, and of course, people love the Green Bar too because we can't forget about the importance of golfing. So you've got your golfers here. Honeymoon by car in 1941. Golf wasn't introduced to us until 1913. Wow. So much. And then of course, here's White Soffer on the map. And you can see if you follow Route 60. And then it goes up through Charleston to Huntington. So pretty cool. So many cool things. You can come play polo. Oh my, there's Eleanor. Grace Coolidge. William Knudsen of General Waters. Yeah, Waters. I mean, the, the look, William Kissing Vanderbilt. <coughs> and the Ferber. Wow. Look, Henry DuPont arrived by private plane. Wow. Mrs. Woodrow Wilson. Mrs. Woodrow Wilson. So there's Edith Galt Wilson. Some who say, oh, here's more um, when it was the hospital. That is so interesting. Look. And as you were talking about this morning, a lot of amputees were here, correct? Yes. Yeah. So There's a lot of amputees. That was one of the bigger main, main portions. focuses. Yeah, that was one of the bigger portions of people who were here when the GIs things like that. A lot of them were amputees. Wow. And then here's the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Yep. They, of course, if you're a, a fan of the Crown, you know he abdic abdicates and 
Queen Elizabeth's dad will become king, and so then she becomes queen when her dad dies. But here they are. They were exiled to, to uh, Paris, um, but didn't stop them from coming to the United States. Oh my gosh. The smartest and gayest resort, the Greenbrier. Look, here's Bob Hope golfing at the, at the Greenbrier. And then you got Bob Hope with the Windsors. And Dwight Eisenhower. There's so much history. Here's Dorothy Draper. A term Walter J. Tui, I believe. Yes, yep. yes, Walter Tui. Yep. Yep. It's a signing, signing, signing her contract. contract in the Victorian writing room, right? Yep. See, I'm I'm learning. I'm 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 a little Greenbrier sponge today, y'all. Dorothy or Victorian writing room being Dorothy Draper's favorite room is the least changed room in the hotel. That's phenomenal. Such an honor to her. And even her one of her private collection um, chandeliers, you said, was in there. Yes. The advertisement for Cadillac there in Life Magazine in front of the Greenbrier. Wow, Sam Sneed Festival. There's so much interesting stuff in here. Weekend on the company. Look at that, girlfriends at the Greenbrier. That's an Ebony magazine in 1958. I mean, that is so. Look at this, Dave. This is because this is a black, uh, a historically black publication, 1958 at the Greenbrier. That's phenomenal. Um, Amos Alonzo Stagg and yeah. Cleveland pitcher Bob, Bob Feller, Feller, Hall of Famer. Yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Oh, Luther Hodges. He was. Is he governor of North Carolina? Can't remember. I know that. We'll name. check and we'll put clarification check. in the comments. Yeah, we'll we'll let you know in the comments. We've got all kinds of things. Princess Grace and Prince Rainier. Oh, I love this image. So they've used tape mm -hmm. and taped out all fifty states, and they had the Governors Association here, and they all stood in their outline of their state. And so here you can see. Wally Barron. Wally Barron, who you might know because he uh, goes to jail after he's governor of West Virginia, the first West Virginia to go, uh, governor to go to jail. Right there he is. And then you have some other famous and infamous names. Um, as in George, George Wallace. Wallace Look, Alabama, there he is with that big smile on his face. Ross Barnett of Mississippi. No relation, by the way. Oral Favis of Arkansas. We know him. Some of these are the most notorious. John Connolly of Texas, uh, who was in the... Cadillac with JFK when he was shot. So if you want to know more about civil rights in southern United States, a lot of these dudes stood in the way of civil rights in their states. Here's more history. Red Skelton. That's so funny. Bobby Henry Kissinger. Briggs. Jack Nicholas, Reverend Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson, Jack Nicholas. But the thing is, is there are all these famous people that come to the Greenbrier, but people like us are welcome too. That's what I love about it. Charles Corralt. Yeah, we don't talk about Charles Corralt either. <laughs> Baba Wawa. Walters. Baba Wawa. Um, this is awesome. Look at this. It, the green bar was different back in the day too because you had like dining plans like it's it's a lot more open today oh here we go colin powell colin powell george hw there's sam sneed tom clancy and <gasps> prince edward tom clancy. one of my favorites i love tom clancy i was a tom clancy junkie back in my teens and 20s and he, and i think he was here like right he owned a house here well, that makes sense because he was from Maryland. Um, but here he is. He's speaking with Prince Edward in the presidential suite in 1997. I had no idea he had a house here. And then here's here, this is the bunker. So that one down the bottom, that's Governor's Hall. Which is... That's going to be your house chamber. House chamber. There's like 400 and what, 40-something seats? Um, 
I think originally it was like 470 something. Now it's about 440. Okay. And then um, this is part of the bunker downstairs. That's the exhibit hall. The exhibit so that's hall. the part that was open to public at all times. Right. Even. Even when it was the bunker. Even when it was secret. All right, and we got one last page, and here's more bunker photos, which we'll talk more about the bunker and later. That's the letter that I was telling you about, the one that came across Walter Stewart's desk, yes. introducing yeah. J. George Stewart. That As is As you mentioned, we see the signatures of Sam Rayburn, the Speaker of the House, and Linda Johnson, the Majority Leader of the Senate. Who else is? I can't. Yeah, one of them's Nolan, and I cannot remember the other one. Here we go. Let's see if we can. No, it's not in there. We'll have to look that we'll look up. Let's see. Stuart Nolan. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So are you recording? Yes. I'm having a moment. So Francis Cott Key was here in the 1830s, and he actually wrote a poem um, about White Sulphur Springs. So it, it says that it was found in the scrapbook of a young Virginia Bell, Cornelia Waddell Lomax. He says, a word of advice about matters and things may be useful to those who visit the Springs, who list to the muse as she kindly sings all for your good, you folks at the Springs. I purpose to tell you all the, uh, of all the fine things that are here to be seen at these sulfur springs. First, there's a bell in the morning that rings to awaken the other bells at the springs, and the bells fix their ribbons and tie up their strings and look very beautiful here at the springs. They all fly as if they had wings to eat the hot cakes abound at the springs. There's a broom and a half where nobody brings such articles here to sweep out the springs. There's a maid and a half for one of them swings, rather much one to the side for she's lame at the springs. There's mint in a plenty for juleps and slings, and the water's too cold or too weak at the springs. There's an insect or two of caught a flea here that stings. The skins of the people that come to the springs. There's a bawling all day, and there's ball at night clings. The most to my fancy of all this, this uh, to, to, of all the springs. To conclude, though some things here would do in for kings, if you want to farewell, say farewell to the springs. Thank you, Francis Scott Key. That is so interesting. So, hey, I have that purple bottle at our house. Pretty cool. So, another really cool room to look at. Oh my goodness, here's Barbie Lee. Yep. And a bunch of his war bones. Yeah, so we've got. P PGT Beauregard's here. Henry Wise, who was governor of Virginia. Um, wow. Yeah, this is probably the two I would mention would be, but see, because right there is Robert E. Lee. Um, that is so interesting. This is the most famous photograph ever taken at White Sulphur Springs. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these people in this photograph. 1869. Yeah. You got George Peabody. So Peabody Foundation still today donated $60,000 to Washington College, which will become Washington and Lee University. That is phenomenal. All right, let's keep on going, y'all. Wow. All right, we're gonna take you out the stairs. Maybe. Ooh, okay, let's do that. We just did that. Okay, so what do we got? Celebrities, personalities, oh. dignitaries. Oh my gosh, look at all these famous people who have been here. Four pages, each one, except for one, three lines, three. Look at this. So we've got Richard Nixon, Bob Hope, Judy Garland, um, Nehru, Indira Gandhi, Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher, which they, you said there's several pieces that of Debbie Reynolds' collection in the main building. Yes. Roosevelt, Ro uh, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, Chrysler, Douglas Fairbanks, Lou Gehrig, Condi Nast, Billy Graham, Edward Kennedy, that's Teddy, Barry Goldwater, John Foster Dulles. Was it John Foster Dulles? The one that you couldn't remember, John Foster Dulles? Okay. Bobby Jones, the golfer. Look at all these. Eunice Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. Princess Grace. Princess Grace. Yeah, who we've talked about. 
Mrs. Calvin Coolidge, Nelson Rockefeller, Robert C. Byrd, Strom Thurmond. They both served in the Senate together. Thomas Dewey, George Wallace, John Travolta. Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, Ross Perot. Henry Clay, who was an unofficial host here before the Civil War. All those presidents. All those presidents. Stonewall Jackson, their PGT Beauregard, George Pobody, Dolly Madison. She's missing her E. Stephen Decatur, I was at his house this summer. Francis Scott Key, James Monroe. Oh my gosh, look at this. Bono. Worldly Safer. Martha Stewart, wonder if she's here for break no. from the jail. Jennifer Garner, Jessica Simpson, Charles Barkley, Smokey Robinson. I wonder if that's William Jennings Randolph. William Randolph. William Randolph, Randolph, Randolph Hearst Jr., Jr. okay. All right. Interesting. Tiger Woods. Jimmy Buffett, Reese Witherspoon, Chuck Yeager, Randy Moss, Peyton Manning. All right, here we go. Newt Gingrich, Cindy Crawford, Cameron Diaz. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Patti LaBelle. Ken Burns, one of my personal favorites. Cal Ripken Jr., Mamie Eisenhower, Lady Bird Johnson, Rudy Giuliani, um, Yogi Berra, Michael J. Fox, Tom Cruise, Jessica Lynch, Mikhail Gorbachev, Madeline Albright, Tom Brokaw, Alan Greenspan. I mean, holy moly, it's a who's who. Jo a Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts, Gladys Knight. Jimmy Hoffa. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Hoffa. Don't forget, he's probably at a union meeting. Stone Phillips. Oh, yeah. I forgot about some Stone Phillips. Chris O'Donnell. Michael McDonald. Oh, Charlie Daniels. All right, Mario Liza Minnelli. I wonder if she came with her mom. Because her mom was over there on the list. Tom Wolfe, fan fantastic author. Walter Annenberg. Ronald Whoa. Reagan, Walter Cronkite, Leslie Stahl, Lex Spiro Agnew, Jesse Jackson, we talked about him earlier, Jay Rockefeller, George H.W. Bush, Arnold Palmer, Arch Moore, right beside a Jack Nicholas, Warren Buffett. My gosh, it is just a veritable Sorry. Robert F. Kennedy, Pee Wee Reese, Geraldine Ferreira, Julia Child. Al, Al Gore, Francis Scott Key. Look, hold on. Let's just take a breath right here. Look at these top three. You've got Andy Griffith. Then you've got Francis Scott Key. Then you've got Collis P. Huntington. Like boom, boom, boom. And then Jack Kemp, who was a uh, vice presidential candidate. Tip O'Neill, Priscilla Presley, Dan Quayle, Doris Kearns Goodwin. Nice. My Angelou. Yeah, my Angelou. Lou Groza. Oh my Jacob gosh, Carlton Var Varney, of course. Oh my gosh, Sam Sneed, Dorothy Draper. Holy moly, folks. It's a veritable who's who of people. Well, that trip you see better days. But it's pretty cool. And of course, you've got our golf clubs up here. And here's our last room. So, what are we looking at here? A Just bedroom. A bedroom. So, you got the bed. That is a menu from the Green Rider. Oh, let's check that out. We can have crab flake cocktail. Filet of sole, boiled spring turkey with dumplings, Virginia ham, native bear steak with chestnut puree, that's interesting. Right beside a grilled filet mignon, fried spring chicken a la Maryland. That's interesting. It's so interesting. Cup green bar, 60 cents. That's from 1929. Ooh, here you could have a special dinner day for three fifty. Fruit supreme, cream of chicken, roast spring turkey with cranberry sauce with mashed turnips and new string beans. 
quart of lettuce with Russian dressing and a glossy surprise Thanksgiving mince pie for three dollars. Gosh, look at this. It's just so interesting. So did Dr. Conte put this together when he was here? This museum? Um, it was here before that, but whenever he was here, he didn't help a lot with it. There's actually a picture of him right over there on the wall. Oh, there he is. Yeah, so if you come to the Greenbrier, this, his book, The History of the Greenbrier, is like a must-have. Um, he was the head historian here at the Greenbrier for over 30 years, so he did a lot of the writing about the bunker. He was here when the bunker was... Um, Found and they wrote about it in the newspaper and once it was declassified he was here at that time so and he I don't think he even knew it was here correct uh, he, he found out about it when the world so found out about it because I know I've heard stories with him he talked about you know the, that that this is the book you need um it is like if you buy it from the groomer I think it's like forty dollars I'm going to tell you my little secret. We bought mine off of eBay and it's signed and I got it for 11 bucks. So eBay, 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 history of the Green Bear. Um, but he was, he was this historian here for decades and yes. had no clue the bunker was here yeah. until so, they declassified. Yeah, at the time, the only people that knew about the bunker, so you had whoever was the president of the of the, of the Green Bar Bar at the time. Exactly. And then the people um, that work for the... People in the, you know, that are actually in the government who needed to know. Right. The 12 to 15 people who worked in the bunker for 30 years, that was the Forsyth Associates. Right. As well as 80 to 100 Green Bar employees that they went through background checks and they were cleared to work in the bunker. So there was about 80 to 100 Green Bar employees that were cleared, they were able to work in the bunker. Right. Today, yes, and today we only have one of those employees still here. Wow. That I don't know. Because it's declassified by 90. 92. Yeah, so we're talking 31 years. Wow. Yep. And because they, they had to work, it was a full time job keeping up and making sure everything worked yep. at all times. You were constantly replacing food replacing provisions and it wasn't just for all the members of Congress it was for their their hot, uh, senior staff members and their families well not the families but well the so families, the families of, would have been uh, Congress the families would have been in the hotel somewhere um, they would have been able to use whatever the green bird had right the bunker was, was continuously restocked with the newest the best everything pretty much so all the equipment Continuously restocked. The pharmacy was restocked. The food. Um, it started out being C rations. Later became you know freeze dried and MREs. Right. And if those like MREs or whatever was getting close to their date, what they would do is they would ship them back out, and they would go to some sort of military camp somewhere that would have been used immediately. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. There was also a, typically a three to five day storage of fresh food so that's meat and fruits and that was constantly updated and so of course it's only three to five day fresh so right. you got to keep it moving and what would happen was if it was getting close to its date it would be sent into the green Briar's food system either to be put into with whatever food but a lot of times it was put together for an employee lunch about or we own a meal for the employees every week Oh my goodness gracious, that is so interesting. Well, you, if you love history, if you love West Virginia history, you've got to come to the Green Rare. You have to come and visit the President's Cottage Museum. There is just so much history for you to see here. And thank you to Caden for the awesome tour. He gave us a great tour. They do a history tour every morning at the Green Rare that's free to all guests. So that's another perk of coming here. So not only do you get to visit the museum, you can take the bunker tour, which you pay for, but you can come and take the free history tour um, with Caden or another Green Bar employee every single morning at the hotel. So I hope you learned a little bit about West Virginia history and in particular about Green Bar history from myself and Caden. Um, you got anything else you want to share before we head off the screen? Good. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, y'all.
Thanks, y'all, for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to West Virginia History with Mrs. B on both Facebook and YouTube.